So you are thinking about making a move abroad, but your motivation is a little bit lacking. Well, stay tuned because in this video, I'm going to share with you five reasons that might be the case and what you can do to move through that so that if moving abroad, if living abroad is truly for you, you can find a way to move through, build momentum, and finally start living abroad. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Patricia Brooks. I am an American expat living in the South of France since 2018. And now I help single women who are ready to make a move abroad to start the next chapters of their lives living in a country they've so wished to for so long, find that confidence and courage so that they can finally start living and thriving in their dream country. And that's exactly what I did. And today, this video is based on a conversation I had with somebody who has been thinking about moving abroad for some time, but came to me because of a lack of motivation. And I thought it, that our conversation was an interesting one. So I'm going to share some thoughts from that conversation and five reasons that potentially your motivation has waned, or maybe you didn't have a whole lot of motivation to begin with. Okay. So you want to move abroad, but there's something that keeps you stuck, that holds you back, stops you from moving forward more quickly. And the thought about moving abroad is still there, but you can't figure out why you're not more motivated, why you haven't made more progress. Well, when I was talking to this woman last week, we were talking about where she wanted to move. And she told me that she'd been wanting to live abroad for several years now. And before the pandemic, she had what she thought was more motivation. But the pandemic slowed her down. And now this idea of living in a foreign country has come back onto her radar. But She's not in the same place where she was before the pandemic with a lot of excitement and a lot of motivation to do the necessary things to get to her country. And so the next question I asked was, well, where is it that you want to move to? And she said, well, I could live in Mexico or, you know, perhaps I could live in France. Maybe even Thailand could work for me. And I stopped her there and I said, I think that one of the problems that you have is that you have not made a decision to move abroad. I think one of the decisions in making a move abroad is deciding where, being definitive about the place that you're going to move to. Because having that place, that vision, that idea that you can focus on and get excited about and think about what life would look and feel like in that particular country, there is something that is inspiring about that. I know that before I landed on the city of Perpignan for my first city to live in in France, I really wanted to live in a French-speaking country. First, it was Canada. Then when I made my trip, my first trip to France, it was France. But there was nothing really pushing me or compelling me to get to France until I found the city that felt right to me, that felt so good to me. And that was the thing that that pushed me on, that egged me on to do the necessary work, to find the necessary help in a coach so that I could actually get to this place that I'd felt before, that I could envision myself living and I could feel myself having this, this overwhelming feeling of freedom all of the time. And I wanted to have that. And so the first thing that might be holding you back is that you haven't decided on a location and not deciding on a location is almost like not having made a decision to move abroad. I think it is that important uh, in the process to decide, define where it is you're going to move, because in that you can get inspired. You can really feel the passion behind it. So that's reason number one. So what can you do to figure this out? Well, you can go on scouting trips 
And you can, I, I also have a questionnaire that would help you to narrow down your focus because if like this person, they were considering Mexico and then Europe and then, you know, the, the Far East, that's a big swath of area to cover. And if you don't have a lot of money, really figuring out and zoning in on where it is you want to spend your time to get that clarity could be important. So I'm going to put a link to that move abroad location questionnaire in the description and feel free to download that. All right. So that's one thing you can do. And that's one thing that might be holding you back. The second thing is maybe you've decided on a location, but that decision is a purely logical decision. On paper, perhaps France seems wonderful to you. The healthcare system, the cost of living, the climate, all of that, right? But you've never been. And you're wondering why you're struggling to really get so excited about it or to do the things that are required to make a move abroad happen. And that's because unless you have some sort of soul calling with the country you have selected, moving to a country sight unseen, people have done it. People have had success in doing it. But in my opinion or in my experience, that is not anything I could ever do because how a place feels is as important to me as the those things on paper, right? It's it's like going on a dating site and seeing the perfect guy or woman, right? Everything lines up and you're like, oh, I can't wait to meet this person. <laughs> and you guys set up a date and you meet the person and it's not the same. It's not what you expected. It's not the person you want to date or be in a relationship with. So Definitely, if you've chosen a country, if at all possible, visit that country and hopefully you'll be able to find a place in that country that really speaks to you because having that feeling and seeing yourself, envisioning yourself living in that place is a powerful incentive to work through the hard parts of making a move abroad. All right. So that's the second reason you might be struggling with motivation or feels like maybe you're dragging your feet to do some of the things you need to do. Is this making sense at all? If it is, give this video a thumbs up. Now, number three has a little bit to do with number two, and that might be that you are stuck in collecting information about the country you want to move to, um, the how of it all the visas and, you know, how do I set up a bank account and how do I apply for a driver's license and how, 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 and you can get stuck in the how. I know for me, I was not very motivated to learn French when I was in high school. I was not very motivated to learn French when I was in college. I needed to because I needed the credit, but I really studied it for the test and for the grade. And part of the reason I was never able to speak French out of high school or out of college was because in those classes, it was all about the how. How do I put a sentence together? What's the grammar? And when I had a reason to learn French, when I recognized that, yeah, living in a French-speaking country is in my future, so I better figure this out, and when I found the program called the Pimsleur Method, which is not about the how and is more about the just speaking and hearing how sentences are put together and repeating and having that repetition that allows you to form sentences and communicate verbally, I didn't believe that it was possible for me to do this. Now, you might be saying, well, I thought we were talking about the how of moving abroad. Well, this is related because in moving abroad, there are the hows that you need to move through. But if that's where you're starting and if that's where you're staying and you're not taking any action, even the smallest action to move forward, then you can get stuck in the how. And a coach of mine 
had said, a business coach of mine has said, oh, you can get stuck in the how hole and getting stuck in the how hole just has you, you know, treading in place and it doesn't feel good. And it's demotivating, much like learning French in high school, much like learning French in college. So the how is important, but also taking steps, even if you don't know completely how to make it happen, just take that first step without necessarily knowing the 11 or 12 or 15 or 50 steps that you have to take in order to have a bank account in France, in order to live in France, right? In order to get a visa, right? In order to clear out your house so that you are able to move abroad. Like there are so many things that can be done that can give you the sense that you are making forward progress and uh, and, and get you out of your head and into action that can help propel you forward in finding how and also making it happen. So getting stuck in your head, overthinking, having to know all of the answers before you make the move, you know, is something that can be paralyzing. And I have to say, I might have been a little bit naive, but my naivete, I think, was helped me in some instances. I wasn't really concerned about how I was going to get a bank account before I moved to France. And was it hard? Well, it wasn't as easy as it would have been if I were living in the U.S., but things came together that allowed me to get a bank account fairly easily. You know, my landlord was able to vouch for me and I got a bank account, right? So had I obsessed about that before I got here, uh, that could have really slowed me down. That could have stopped me in my tracks. That could have been a big demotivator. So that's the third thing. Take steps, take action as you as you research, but don't only research. That is my my suggestion to help you move through number three. Number four is the first thing that I work with my clients on, and it's why. Why is it that you want to live in a foreign country? And sometimes the why is very surface level. It could be, well, I like the French culture. And while the French culture is lovely, many parts of the French culture are lovely, you need to go a little bit deeper than that in order to really find something that strikes a chord with you that's going to make you want to disrupt your life so completely to start over. And if you are, you know, 35, 40, you are, have been settled for a little while in terms of a bank account and where you're living, most likely. And so to start over again, you might have forgotten the challenges in that. But having a why that is deeper than like the culture can help you. And so you might say, okay, but how do I get to a why that is deeper than what I have? And the answer is ask yourself, why is that important to me? So maybe you said that the culture really speaks to you. Then ask yourself the follow on question. And why is that so important to me? Right? Well, because I feel like I'm living in a place that's devoid of culture and it feels pretty uh, boring. Oh, so why is that so important to you? Well, being in a, an environment that is exciting and that fuels my creativity is important. And why is that so important to me? Well, because I really want to get back to writing and I know that being in a place that is a different culture and that sparks my creativity will really make my life so much richer. And why is that so important to me? Because I believe that I deserve to have the richest life possible. And then you can ask yourself, what core values does that why speak to or honor more fully? For me, moving to France was, and I didn't know this at the time, but it was all about finding beauty. The language was beautiful. I wanted to speak this beautiful language. And being in a place that is beautiful, looking out my windows at the mountains, walking down the streets and looking at the architecture, it just fills me up. It fuels me, 
right? And that core value of beauty is really being spoken to and honored here for me. So that's number four, that you don't know your why, why you're going to disrupt your life so completely to move abroad. And so it feels really hard. Now, maybe it's not worth it. But when you dig down and drill down into a deeper why, something that really speaks to you again, where you can feel it, right? It's not just in your head. Oh, I'll be living in this place that, you know, seems wonderful. No, you can feel how it would feel or what how that would change your life, that gets you motivated, that gets you inspired, that gets you moving, that gets you creative to find solutions on how, (laughs) okay? So that's number four. And number five has to do with belief, okay? Oftentimes we want something, we want something badly, but At the same time, we don't believe that it's possible for us to have that thing. And so what happens is in our disbelief, in our not believing that we can have this thing that we want, we can do a couple of things. We can kind of quash it on our own saying, yeah, I want this thing, but it's not possible. And so just talk ourselves out of it, which is demotivating, or we can tell ourselves that we want this, know that we want this thing, but subconsciously we don't believe it. And so we don't do the things that are required to make it happen. So for example, let's go back to my learning French. In high school, in college, I did not believe that it was possible for me to learn the French language in large part because my brother was very gifted with languages and my mother told me as much. And I read into that thinking that She didn't think that I was as talented or that I could learn to speak, read, write French fluently. And so I started to believe that. And so I did enough to get a passing grade in my French classes, right? Fast forward to 2014, 2015, when that that spark of an idea of living in a French speaking country came to me. And I went to Quebec City, Canada for the first time. And I, you know, am speaking the words and phrases that I know in French because I started taking the Pimsleur method and I'm speaking it with a pretty good accent. And the Quebecois came back at me with full French, thinking that I spoke French. And that was really encouraging. And so taking that step, taking that action of learning, taking the Pimsleur method and going and visiting a French speaking country and actually speaking to the locals in it, that was so empowering. And it made me believe, hmm, maybe I could learn to speak, read and write French fluently. Right. And so that belief catapulted me forward until today, right? So, and it's such a good feeling. So the fifth thing that might be holding you back, might be demotivating you is a lack of belief in the fact that it's possible. Somebody asked me uh, in a comment recently, oh, do you really think it's possible, you know, for me to move abroad? And I had to respond saying, and that's a question for you. If you believe you can, you can. And if you believe you can't, you're right. And if you truly want something, but feel like it's not possible for you, you need to figure out how to start believing, truly believing that it's possible for you. And that might come in the form of getting help from a coach or from a friend who has a belief in you and getting that fixed. Because if you don't believe something is possible, Why in the world would you exert any effort to make it happen, right? And if you do, the effort that you exert is really defeated energy or defeated effort that is not going to yield you what you want, okay? So I know this is a video that's a little bit deep, but I, I thought it was interesting, the conversation I had last week, and I wanted to share that with you. So of these five things, which one of those have you experienced with anything that you've wanted to do and how did you move through that so that you could actually have or experience or achieve the thing you are going for let me know in the comments all right now if you have a dream of living in a foreign country and 
you feel stuck because Maybe you don't have the motivation, or maybe you don't have the belief, or maybe you would like the support and encouragement of people who have already done that, then I would love to have a conversation with you. My program, the Carefree Expat Incubator for Single Women Looking to Move Abroad, is the perfect blend of information, of coaching, of being in a group of like-minded women that can catapult you forward and into your dream life of living abroad. And if that sounds interesting to you, be sure to go to thecouragecatalyst.com forward slash future expat, schedule your appointment with me. And I really look forward to that conversation so that I can see where you are and where it is you want to go, where you are stuck. And if our working together makes sense and could help you move forward more quickly and with more ease. All right. So I'm going to put that link in the description. Be sure to schedule your appointment with me and I look forward to it. Now that is all I have for you today. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, share it with friends, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you again next time. Bye for now.